Hi, I'm Greg McDonald. I am the multimedia producer for the case study group. Today I want to take you on a quick tour of some open source software called OBS. OBS stands for Open Broadcaster Software. And as the name kind of suggests, it basically turns your computer into a little TV studio capable of bringing things in like webcams, any video source, anything that can be displayed on your window allows you to mix them or overlay them whatever you want with them and then push them out to a real-time streaming service essentially turning you into a broadcaster uh, it's been long the, f the favorite of the gaming community gamers have used it to capture their game sessions so the action in a window uh, put themselves in as a webcam uh, shot uh, bring in various data overlays and possibly even social media feeds mix them, overlay them, send them out to real-time streaming platform called Twitch. You may be familiar, uh, but it works with other platforms as well. And the one we're particularly interested in right now is Zoom, our uh, education, remote education platform of the moment. And so to recast this in an educational light, uh, if, if we can bring in any window, that means we can bring in PowerPoints, we can bring in Excel spreadsheets, we can do uh, PDFs, any sort of document that, that, that uh, you can have on your computer, anything that can be brought in through a web browser, so maps, uh, videos, as well as websites, obviously, and social media feeds, as I said, um, but also uh, webcams, as we know, also things like document cameras, which uh, we'll take a look at later, uh, or even tablets for uh, those who like to emulate sort of a blackboard or whiteboard experience for their students. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to jump into our first um, source input in this case, which is a uh, keynote, Apple's answer to PowerPoint. I don't have Office on this machine um, uh, presentation. So and as you just saw, OBS also allows us to do custom transitions whenever we switch between our various sources. Um, the basic workflow is to control uh, the document or PowerPoint or whatever in the application itself. So in this case, I'm going full screen and I start to navigate this PowerPoint in uh, Keynote basically as I would anywhere else. As you can see, transitions are rendering. The graphics are really quite crisp, legible. Doesn't take much to actually learn how to produce things like graphics or uh, master things like sizing of windows to create um, really legible presentations at the other end for your audience. As I stated you can do also things like anything through a window. In this case, a browser window, we're bringing in a Google Sheet and scrolling, scrolling, can manipulate values. Anything that you can do in the sheet, you can obviously push out to OBS. So manipulate things in real time. Um, and clearly, it doesn't just have to be something through the web, but as we saw with the PowerPoint, you can also do Excel spreadsheets. I'm not sure where that 12 came from, but sometimes uh, navigating all the windows, you can create little artifacts like that. Um, but as we saw earlier, you can also manipulate values in real time. We'll let the auditors worry about that. As I said, we can also bring in PDF documents, and I've decided to bring myself back into the picture here. So in this case, we're looking at the UPS annual report. Kind of wanted to show how crisp the graphics can appear if you just follow some simple guidelines, even with something like a table, as we see here. Um, I'm actually going to take myself out. and. As promised, we can also bring in things from the web like YouTube videos. This next, actually maybe I'll bring myself back in. This next um, video basically is from the case study group uh, YouTube channel. And we're obviously not just going to see it, but hear it, which is something OBS can handle. 
And uh, without further ado, I think you'll probably recognize our on-screen talent. Let me just get off the screen and opening up in the browser. I'm going to mute myself for a sec. I'm Roger Ibbotson, professor at Yale School of Management and an investor. If you want to understand how something really works, I think you actually have to do it. That's why years ago I created a game where my students can actually participate in the stock market getting hands-on experience. Today, anyone can play this game because it is now available online as the Yale Stock Trading Game. The game requires at least 20 students with no upper limit, all starting with the same portfolio of stocks and cash. Trading only with each other, they buy and sell shares with the goal of maximizing their portfolio's wealth and beating the market. Along the way, public So I'm actually going to show that I can actually talk over a video as well. Um, in this case, OBS has a little audio mixer, which allows me to mix the two channels. And um, I'm actually going to come out of this altogether. Although no two outcomes are the same, I designed the Yale stock trading. And I'm back. And um, so just to point out, that was video uh, being streamed off of the web into OBS, not exactly full frame rate, so it does appear a little jerky. Sometimes we have no choice uh, if we want to show something. Uh, but we can also, obviously, as I said earlier, st stream things um, off of our hard drives. So, But um, what I wanted to do is actually to, to have you look at the same video, but this time streamed, as I said, off the hard drive, uh, to show that there is quite a difference, actually, in quality. And again, I'm going to mute myself as we come in. I'm Roger Ibbotson, professor at Yale School of Management and an investor. If you want to understand how something really works, I think you actually have to do it. That's why years ago I created a game where my students can actually participate in the stock market getting hands-on experience. Today, anyone can play this game because it is now available online as the Yale Stock Trading Game. The game requires at least 20 students with no upper limit, all starting with the same portfolio of stocks and cash. Trading only with each other, they buy and sell shares with the goal of maximizing the portfolio's wealth. And as I did earlier, we can also do the same, uh, bring down the program audio to bring our mic up so we can talk over things. Uh, in this case, I can also actually completely mute the video, uh, which maybe isn't all that interesting. Uh, we can also create playlists and navigate those with the keyboard. I'm not going to jump to another video, which may look familiar. Yeah, yeah. Good Morning to see, Rick. Todd. Sit down. We've been working hard on this, and we've really pulled out all the stops. Look what we got. Origination. We did 20 million last year. We think we can do 120 million dollars. So you can actually make playlists as long as you want. I'm going to just show a third video briefly. Every day, around the world, millions of financial transactions take place. In fact, during this short program, billions of dollars in electronic transfers, checks. And I've unmuted myself again. So just to give you a little demo of what can be done with video playback on your local machine, um, I think the, the quality kind of speaks for itself, the difference in quality between streaming and local. Um, one last thing I want to look at is a makeshift document camera I've created just to show the experience a little bit of what it could be like to try and emulate a blackboard or whiteboard experience. And there's my tablet. So for anybody who wants to show graphically something in real time by hand, It can be done. Of course, there, there are real, well, I don't want to say real, but there are uh, document cameras that one can purchase as well. So I'm now going to come back to me 
Again, everything you've seen today has been done in real time, no editing. Um, and all the switching and ver some of the video controls and things that you've seen are bringing m me in and out in the small webcam uh, view have all been done through some very simple keyboard programming, uh, maybe a dozen at most. Um, so that concludes my presentation and um, I want to thank you for watching. I am creating documentation on this, uh, but if you have questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, my name is Greg McDonald, multimedia producer for the case study group, and my email is actually contained in the description of this video. Um, so again, thanks for watching, and, and please be well. Stay well.